When planning a day out hail walking, scrambling or climbing, you want to consider probably first the weather forecast. If I use a national forecast, I'm looking to identify an area where I might be able to go scrambling, climbing, hill walking, whatever it happens to be. Once I've decided on the area, then hopefully I'll be able to find some guidebooks that will point me in the right direction for working out the details of any routes I want to do. And then hopefully I can identify the maps as well that I might need. So what we're going to do first is look at a detailed weather forecast and how we use that to plan our day. Once I've looked at the generic forecast and identified an area that looks good for me, for example, if I'm in Aviemore, the northwest looks good, I'm going to have a look at the local forecast for that, and preferably one that's specific to what I want to do, for example, a mountain weather forecast. So what we've got here is a forecast from the Mountain Weather Information Service, and this is a forecast for 900 metres, so it's more relevant to what I'm wanting to do, probably. At the top we have a UK summary with a small picture of a synoptic chart. I can tell from this that the weather is moving from south to north, which is why it's better for us to head north. Down below we have more detail to the forecast and it's broken down into how windy it's going to be, how wet it's going to be, the visibility and at the bottom how cold it's going to be at 900 metres. So now I can relate this to any plan that I might be uh, working out. Not very windy, so actually it wouldn't have much influence on me, but I'm going to plan around that. I'm going to try and work to the wind to my back or, or go climbing in the lee of the hill based on that wind forecast. If it's raining all day, then I might not go climbing or scrambling. I might just go walking. And the visibility will affect me as well. If I'm navigating off paths, for example, I'm going to need longer and it's going to uh, be a little bit more complicated. Down the bottom, I've got the temperature. Temperature is obviously going to influence me, what I pack, which is very important. So from this point on, I'm looking at guidebooks, I'm considering the weather forecast, and I'm packing around th that information. When planning a day climbing, I'll have used a weather forecast to focus in on an area that I think I'll get a dry climb. Beyond that, I'm going to look at a guidebook which covers the area that I'm interested in and combine that with a map uh, to make sure I can get to my climb. A guidebook like this is a definitive guidebook. It covers all the climbs in a specific area and has lots of useful information besides just route descriptions. I can work out how to get to the location, where to park and how to walk in, for example. And since we're up at the northwest coast, due to the forecast looking best up there, the old man of Stewart looks like a, a good bet, classic climb, quite an exciting day out. However, it's more involved and there's a lot of information in the guidebook that will help me out there in the planning. For a start, it's a sea stack, so it's tidal, so I need to be aware of what the tide is doing when I'm likely to be there. Um, there's a steep descent to get to the base of the cliff before you even start climbing. That might have issues, you may have to abseil. You have to set up a tourlene traverse, so you're going to need an extra rope for the tourlene traverse. And if you're not first there, you're going to have to swim across and put that rope across the gap in the first place. So sea stay and uh, maybe a towel, an extra kit is going to be needed for that. Once I've worked out the sort of uh, logistics of the day out, I can then look at the, the actual route description itself. That tells me how many pitches the route is, the grade itself and where the climb goes. On a route like the Old Man of Stour, that's the easy bit. Otherwise, all the information there, if you don't uh, take note of it before you leave, the day might turn into a bit of an epic.